Hello, I'm Mike Myers, Kilo 3 Delta Oscar, and this week I have something that's not necessarily amateur radio, but maybe kind of is. Definitely radio related. Um, so, and this week, I won't keep the suspense anymore. We're going to talk about Meshtastic. And Meshtastic is LoRa. If you've heard of LoRa Long Range, basically what it stands for, L-O-R-A. You may have heard of LoRa WAN, like the Helium Network or the Things Network. This is not LoRa WAN, but uses the same technology. This is a mesh technology that sends messages from devices like this, with or without a keyboard. This device doesn't have one. Very long distances. We're talking um, around here, I've gotten five to six miles from device to device. And it's also a mesh. So when this device receives a message, say I'm sitting here and I send this, this receives it, you know, three, four miles away, whatever it is, it will retransmit it again, up to three times by default. So you can see it can grow to be a very large network just by these tiny and in very inexpensive devices. So I'm gonna walk through a whole bunch of devices. Some have keyboards like this one, some don't like this one, some are designed to be more of a repeater or a home base unit like this one. Then um, you got things you can buy that are, you can print your own 3D cases. It's a very flexible, very uh, fun thing to play with, but if you wanna go turnkey, you buy one of these, and this lasts like almost two days on a battery charge. So depending on how much you use it. But anyways, we'll get into what all this stuff is. Uh, and I mentioned about amateur radio, if you're licensed, there's a little bit of a change there. You can turn on, they give you a little bit more distance. Uh, and also you have to be a trough encryption. We'll talk about all those different things. Uh, the app that you use to talk with devices like this on your phone is Bluetooth based. It got an Android and a wind and a Apple version. So we'll walk through all that stuff and get you started. It's a very fun thing to play with, even if you're not a radio amateur. Let's go and get started. Okay, let's jump into Meshtastic and what it's all about. So, um, first of all, I'm going to start on the Meshtastic page because it gives a great overview of kind of what it is. Um, and I would recommend if you want to learn more, you go out there. It's it's a lot of good information out there. But basically, if you look at the web page here, you see um, all these devices that communicate to each other. So, uh, if you're familiar with LoRa, or if you never, or maybe you have never heard of it before, so LoRa is a low power, long distance which what LoRa stands for, low power um, and long range. So uh, O-L-R-A is long range. And uh, in my case here, I've been experimenting with it and I'm getting, I live in a very flat area now here in Florida. So I'm getting about five miles pretty consistently. Some, some directions I can get a little bit farther. Uh, so it's very, very much a long range, very low power device. Um, they run on very small batteries, run for a very long time. Uh, LoRa is designed for uh, IoT, which is you know, Internet of Things, and uh, they use it for all kinds of things. There's also something called LoRaWAN, which is LoRa, but with a wide area network component attached to it, so it allows it to communicate um, over like a, long, a large network. So sometimes they use them in farms and, and other sensors that are out in the middle of the field so they can communicate long distance. So that's a little bit of background just on LoRa itself. But Meshtastic itself uses the LoRa protocol and uses the LoRa frequencies as well. So they're actually using off-the-shelf devices that can do uh, LoRa already. It's just a special protocol for Meshtastic. And you see in the picture here, uh, the way um, Meshtastic works is it makes a mesh. So like um, these small devices don't have displays, which we're going to go through all the devices um, in the next video that comes out. Uh, and you can see some of them have keyboards and displays. Some of them have just displays, no keyboards. Some of them don't have anything. So it really depends on what, what your need is. But if you don't have a, a keyboard or, or a display, um, you use your cell phone. So there's an app you put on your cell phone called Meshtastic, and it communicates via Bluetooth to the device. So you can send messages and receive messages uh, via your cell phone. It goes, it sends that over to this device, and then it sends it out over a long distance um, and then this technology uses mesh, or uh, I call it mesh flooding. There's a different, just a different shape between what I consider mesh and mesh for Laura, for uh, Meshtastic. So this device sends it out, and I'm going to demonstrate this in a second in a different way, but this device sends it out, and these other devices will receive it, and they will retransmit it up to so many times. So, um, and in the next video, we'll get through some of the devices. You'll see some of them have keyboards, some of them don't. 
Um, so if you have the one that has a keyboard and display, you can just answer back right there on, the, on that device. So, and you can see you can also connect it up to the computer um, and it works with Android and iOS uh, both. So I'm gonna demonstrate both of those and how to configure them. And then it's other options you have for longer distance as well um, that require the internet. So it's not really a good device for uh, in an emergency because the internet would go down, you would lose that connectivity. So you may be asking, why would I do this? I have a cell phone. Well, yeah, you do. But what happens if the cell phone network goes down, particularly like I live in Florida and in last year when the hurricane came through, um, there was um, a lot of cell phone outages for days. The other thing is, what if you're out camping or hiking and uh, you don't have cell phone coverage? So you might use this with your family to be able to communicate. Uh, it's another option. So there's all kinds of emergency and or just fun. I mean, this is for me, this is radio. It's fun. It's digital. You know, that's why I'm I kind of like it. Um, so anyways, that's what Laura is. All right. Let me jump over to uh, another screen real quick. I'm going to walk through how this works. So. All right. What we have here is a map and it's a map of I don't know where. I just picked out a background map image off one of the uh, uh, photo sites that I'm a member of. So and with the ignore what the greens are, I don't, that was part of the map. But if you look at the yellow dots, let's look at those as being nodes. So these nodes could be like these little handheld devices that we're talking about. Um, or it could be um, a, a node that I have at my house, which is actually in my attic, which gives me a little bit more distance or a node that I just put on top of the mountain in Gamera Mountain. So it could be a mixture or any, any part of this. But for this particular one, let's look at a handheld device because they don't typically go quite as far. So let me turn off my video because it's important because down the bottom right, you see that yellow dot. So that's, an, that's another person with one of these handheld devices. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with the person down on the bottom left. So they're gonna send a message and they transmit it out. So that circle is the distance they can transmit. So you see they covered four other nodes. So those four other nodes are going to receive the message. So what, what happens next is those four nodes look at the transmit count and say, ah, it's only been transmitted one time. So I'm going to retransmit it. So they retransmit it. And what you see is the two top yellow ones now receive it. And in addition, the one who originally transmitted it receives it. So you see they turned orange. That means they've got the acknowledgement back. So when you send the message in Mestastic, the transmitting device looks for an acknowledgement of that transmit. If it doesn't get in a certain period of time, it's going to retransmit it again. So they now have got the acknowledgement that their message was received by somebody. So those four that just received that uh, retransmitted and these two on the top have now received it. So what happens next is they look at the count. They say, oh, it's only been transmitted two times. So they're going to retransmit it again. Of course, you see the ones that are in blue saying they received the message. But in addition to that, they're also going to get the acknowledgement back that that was received. And when that those top two retransmit, they see they, they cover another node. So now that node has received it. It receives that and says, oh, it's already been transmitted three times. I'm not going to retransmit it. But it did receive the message. But what I want you to notice is the person down on the bottom right didn't receive the message. So this is part of the problem you get when you get these uh, short, shorter transmit and forward mesh uh, technologies. So the only way you could solve this, there's two ways you can solve it. Uh, one of them is by adding a node somewhere in the middle. So find another friend or whatever and, and give them a node. That'd be that'd be one way. Um, but the other way we're going to talk about in, in the future is another method that we connect your Meshtastic to MQTT. Uh, we'll explain what MQTT is uh, in that video, but basically look at it as a, as a internet based messaging service. Uh, so that would be that would allow that node to connect to the, the mesh using uh, MQTT. The problem with MQTT is in a disaster scenario, if you lose the Internet, you're not going to have access to MQTT. So you're going to be an island again. So but think of it like this. If you were also out uh, with your family camping where you have poor cell phone coverage, you know, somebody's fishing on the lake and somebody else is hiking. As long as you're within a couple miles of each other, um, you're more likely they're going to be fine. Of course, there's always variances on how far you can go based upon terrain and trees and, and all that. But um, this is another potential technology that you could use um, when you're out uh, camping or something like that as well. And in, in the case of a disaster uh, where you lose your cell phone coverage or you lose the Internet, you could use you know something like this as well. So that's a quick overview of what Meshtastic is. Um, we'll do some more videos coming up, a whole bunch of them actually, <laughs> on what Meshtastic is. And um, 
give you a little more detail and we'll talk, next video we'll talk about the devices that are out there most of them are very very inexpensive um and uh, very easy to set up uh it's a it's a great t uh, new technology that's coming out uh using the laura laura technology and also i would recommend if you're interested in in like radio type stuff look up laura and laura wan both um i've been playing a lot with laura with sensors and stuff so it's uh, it's a pretty neat pretty neat technology so i would definitely recommend it but i do want to thank you for watching the video hopefully this helped uh please give it a thumbs up and uh, click the subscribe button down below and make sure you click the little bell as well so that you get the notifications when the new videos come out see you in the next video